Good afternoon once again. Thank you for joining us for our study here on Revelation 7 Seals, seal number 5. As usual, please like and comment on these videos, and please subscribe to our channel. We'd like to hit 250. That's our next goal, so please share this with your friends and family and ask them to subscribe. If you would like to get a copy of the study that we are following here, if you go down in the description of this video, you will find a link. Uh, it will take you to the PDF version of this study. Uh, you can download it and use it that way. Or if you go to Secrets Unsealed's website, you could also purchase a physical copy if you would like to do that. Um, so please check that out. Well, let's pray and we'll get going. Sounds good. Father in heaven, we want to thank you again for this Sabbath day. We want to thank you for this opportunity we have to open your word and study it. Uh, Father, we just pray that your spirit will be with us. Uh, the book of Revelation can be difficult to understand sometimes. We just pray that you will uh, guide us and uh, bring us understanding. Father, we pray that these studies will bless somebody um, and help them to grow closer to you. Father, we pray that uh, your spirit will be with us and give us the right words to speak. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Welcome. Happy Sabbath. Happy and Sabbath. surprise, Happy we're here this, this Sabbath. Yes. I was really wrong last got, got week. I thought it was up. June. <laughs> it was the end of May. So next weekend, for sure, um, it'll just be Paul and Savannah we, we doing checked. the seven seals. What? Yeah, what? Um, le leading out the, <laughs> out the study, and they'll pick one of you to come up here and stand Probably. Uh, with them. <laughs> but uh, for real this time, uh, I will not or be here we? this next weekend. <laughs> um, but uh, we're glad you joined us. Let us know on the YouTube Live. Tell us, If you're watching in a group, um, tell us your name. We want to know who's studying with us. Um, we've got a few people here studying with us as well. Like Paul said, uh, please get the syllabus in one form or another. It's just great to have to go over notes again and quotes. We'll put as much on the screen as possible for you so you can rewatch the videos. We know it's a lot of information on history. We're going to be on page, we're going to start, go back a page to 223 and start where it says the second stage of the martyrs. Because this will act as a recap, and it's only a couple of paragraphs into where we, where we left off last week. But uh, first, let's go ahead and open our Bibles to Revelation chapter 6. And Savannah will read verses 9 through 11 in regards to the fifth seal. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar, of, altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then a white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer, until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren, who would be killed as they were, was completed. And so as we've been studying, there are two stages of the martyrs. There are those who have died mm -hmm. already, right, for their testimony, and then there, for the testimony which they held in the verse 9. And then there will be those who will be persecuted in the future. Mm -hmm. And so there's an explanation in, of, uh, that there are two specific time periods. And in between then, and we've studied, I think, pretty exhaustively for what we could, right, for what we're capable of, of what the souls are, who the souls are, what the altar, which altar it represents, um, the testimony that they had. So if you're joining us for the first time, we would really encourage you to actually start on a, at the playlist mm -hmm. and start. We, we end with seal number two. That was actually our first live stream. So I would encourage you to go through and watch each video and study so that you understand what this means because we've talked about it quite a bit. We've talked about church and state. Uh, there's a lot of things happening um, now where we're not just seeing things uh, preparing for the future, but we're seeing real events you mm -hmm. know, in today's world, which is a very exciting time. Mm -hmm. um, but if you don't know what's going on, if you don't know what uh, God what God has planned for us and how he's showing us how to be prepared, it can be extremely terrifying uh, for a person 
um, for people who don't know what's going on. And maybe you're expecting the world is going to get better and people will get things figured out. But according to the Bible and what God says, it won't. The world won't. Right. But us as individuals will grow in our relationship with Christ so that we have peace, that, we're not, uh, that we don't live in fear. Yeah. Mm. So that's the personal application to why we're studying the seven seals. It isn't just history. History is profitable for us in that we know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So right. we can learn from the, the previous example. So uh, in Revelation 13, did you guys have a comment before I go on? Not necessarily, but as as we've seen, not only in our Sabbath school study, history repeats itself. Yeah. So it's good to Very know so. know yeah. what's happened and hopefully learn from it. Okay. Which, as we've also found, we don't seem to do that very well either. <laughs> <laughs> Always got to stick your hand in yeah. the paint to see what yeah, color it is, know. right? <laughs> you know, um, even in today's world, people are trying to erase history. Mm. Mm. You know, and a lot of awful things have happened. In Earth's history, right. and um, it's people have, are they're doing a lot to get a, to get rid of history, but it's so important that we understand it. it tells right. us how we got where we're at, yep. and it also prepares us to go through what we're about to go through. Mm -hmm. yep. So, um, we're going to start in Revelation uh, on page two twenty three, the second stage of martyrs, Revelation thirteen and verse three, and I'll have Savannah read that one as well. And again, we're backtracking a little bit from last week, but just to do a recap of of where we left off, 13.3. And I saw one of his heads as it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world marveled and followed the beast. So after the deadly wound heals, the papacy will persecute a future group of martyrs, as it did the martyrs of the past. According to this text, the deadly wound of the beast will heal, and it will behave once more as it had in foregone years. Mm -hmm. Regarding the healing of the wound, We'll read a quote here, but remember, what was that deadly wound to church and state? What is that, that wound that there's, there's, it's mortally wounded? When was this beast power, this uh, little horn, this papal Rome, when did that happen, the when mortal wound? The papacy was moved from its capital to, was it Constantinople? It was like in seven, or when was it? Let's go to the, let's go to the year. <laughs> what, when did the 1260 years end? When did they start? Yeah, more math. Okay. <laughs> you guys have been doing math all, been all day today. All day. I think last night math. we were even doing it. So 1798 is when it ended, right? So 538 would be when it started. Mm -hmm. And that's when Justinian, the emperor of Rome, had given the keys of Rome to, look, he vacated Caesar's seat. Yeah. So there's an empty seat. Papal Rome's like, We'll sit in that seat. <laughs> like, I got it. <laughs> because uh, we're, you know, we're, we're in charge of the church. We're the head right. of the church. Now we're the head of church and, and state. state. And for 1260 years, that's what took place. Right. And in 1798, we had the French Revolution, mm -hmm. right? And we had uh, Napoleon's general Berthier. He had taken the Pope and uh, exiled him. And mm -hmm. that's, where, that's where he died. So that mortal wound was the separation of church and state. But notice uh, what Savannah had read. His deadly wound was healed. Mm -hmm. So if the wound is the separation of church and state, then the healing of the wound would is be the, the joining, together joining together of again. church and state again. So uh, when we look at all these signs and we, we study Matthew 24 and Mark 13 and, and in Luke 21, all these signs, remember the disciples are like, tell us what the signs are going to be. Yeah. And we, you have the, the dual prophecy, if you will, of the destruction of Jerusalem and the end of the world before Jesus comes again. And you have earthquakes, you have civil unrest. You have, what else? What are some of the other things? You have pestilences. Pestilence and wars right? so and rumors of wars. Wars and, and rumors and wars. Nation against rising nation. against nation, right? All these mm -hmm. things. And we're seeing that. Right. But what's the big sign for knowing that the wheel, the machine that I call it, you know, persecution starts again, is when church and state mm -hmm. again joins hands. So when, when papal Rome, the papacy, which is the government, remember, we're not talking right. about individual members, we're talking about the system that is the papacy, which is for church and state. Right. And yes, they are the smallest country yeah, they um, are. In, in the world. Uh, the, the Vatican, uh, they have their own currency, mm -hmm. uh, language, uh, the Swiss Guard, their own police force. Their own yeah. police force you know, so um, and you can look it up. Uh, smallest country in the world, Vatican City. 
um, is the smallest, and that's, and that's a government, if that makes sense, you know, the Vatican City. Um, like, we don't have an Adventist city, in the world. right? We don't have Adventist city. You don't see Baptist city. Yeah. You know, we have churches, but when you have your own government, you know, your own, <clears throat> your own civil laws or whatever, you right. can easily see uh, church and state. So will you please read the quote then in regarding to the healing of the wound that is uh, from Manuscript Releases, page 13, 194. We have no time to lose. Troublous times are before us. The world is stirred with the spirit of war. Soon the scenes of trouble spoken of in the prophecies will take place. The prophecy in the 11th of Daniel has nearly reached its complete fulfillment. Much of the history that has taken place in fulfillment of this prophecy will be repeated. In the 30th year verse, a power is spoken of that shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the Holy Covenant. So shall he do. He shall ever return and have intelligence with them that forsake the Holy Covenant. Scenes similar to those described in these words will take place. So notice, so will history repeat itself? Yep. Exactly? In like manner. That's right. So that's important to see similar. Yeah. You know, by the way, uh, this persecution that took place during the 1260 years uh, took place in, in Europe. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you had people flee Europe, mm -hmm. you know, so that they could have religious freedom. There's a lot of history on that. Um, that if you have time to read all this, I could list off some books, but I won't. I won't. Uh, we can add them. We, we can, we can add like books to read <laughs> with studying this. Um, but Roger Williams, who was, uh, he founded Providence, mm -hmm. was truly the first um, municipality or, or town in the U.S. that actually had uh, the separation of church and state. Because even though they fled Europe, they still brought a lot of what they Ever, learned. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so, but it's important to understand that that was not worldwide. Mm. It's right, localized. right, localized, and it was a span of over a thousand years. Mm -hmm. This time around, it's going to be worldwide, and it's not going to be a thousand years. It's going to be actually incredibly fast, and the more we study in Revelation, we'll notice how Jesus warns us of that, and that he even spares his people because the times before us get so bad that um, if he didn't shorten them, nobody would survive, you right. know, so the world's going to get worse but we can have peace and we can get better look there's a message of hope in this because it's easy to get it's easy to get caught up in despair mm -hmm. and worry um, when we think about i mean look at what we've been watching this last week yeah. what amazing what happens in a week yeah because this mm -hmm. time last week where we haven't right yeah we just started right we last, just started. it was friday, last friday was it friday so eight days ago yeah, yeah. minneapolis yeah. was was up in flames and the protest have, I, I have, and it is a privilege to be able to work um, in these amazing buildings that we have in downtown Denver, but we spent the whole week boarding up um, all the buildings because of all the destruction right. that was taking place. And not only in major cities, but even in small, small towns. Mm -hmm. I heard, you ever heard of Craig? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Craig, yeah. I consider that small. <laughs> It's named after just one guy, Craig, you know, <laughs> but even they had protests there, you know, right. but it went worldwide, the protests. Yeah. And that didn't necessarily surprise me, but it, like I'm, in, I'm amazed by it, right. you know, that other cities and other countries around the world, you know, because of something that took place um, in Minneapolis, you know, you see the whole world respond. Yeah, and it kind of shows the influence that, the United States has that's on the rest point. of the world because, you know, usually something happens here. Usually everybody else is like, okay, whatever, that's them. Don't, right. We don't need to worry about it. But it's showing kind of how much influence even something like this that we have over the rest of the world. Yeah. That's a great Everybody's point. Everybody's watching. In fact, that's, uh, you should write that down, what you just said. Um, or we can rewind it. All <laughs> yeah. right. What you, minute you are can... we at? Write that down. <laughs> um, because that's crucial in understanding the, the chapter 13 in Revelation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because remember the second beast that comes up out of the earth builds an image for the first beast. Yes. And so it's the influence we know that represents the U.S., right? The, mm. the horns like a lamb, but it speaks like as a dragon. A dragon. So it looks dragon. innocent, but it's not, right? It's, uh, and we talked about that last week um, in, uh, in regards to Antichrist, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, that it looks like uh, it's a good thing, but 
um, underneath it's still the same oppressive, persecuted power that it was before. So that's a good uh, mindset to have when you're understanding in Bible prophecy, especially in Revelation chapter 13, the U.S. in Bible history, because the world will follow the example the U.S. Mm -hmm. sets. Yeah. And right now, it's chaos. Right. So the world's in chaos. Yeah. And we're not, and we, I mean, have we seen anything yet? You know, you're kind of like, before the pandemic, you know, it's uh, shocking. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. This really can happen on a global level fast. Right. And then we're just getting used to the COVID uh, operating procedures at work. And then you have, you know, riots in the cities and, uh, and up here. Well, and then we had killer hornets and then oh, those the murder kind of hornets. Murder and then, hornets. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't want to forget the murder Don't hornets. Don't forget the murder hornets. Yeah. In Washington State. <laughs> that so. was tucked in there yeah. in between the COVID it and the riots. It was, though. It made a big deal about it. So um, watch out for big bugs. Okay. That would probably be pestilences or something, right? <laughs> yeah. Probably. Yeah, I'd go okay. into that category, I believe. Yeah. Now you've got me thinking about wasps. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to the next quote. And that's going to be great controversy. Paul, I'll have you read this one. This is going to be page 579. Uh, give me a second. Let me see if I got that on a slide here for people so they can follow along. All right. Great controversy. Page 579 reads, The influence of Rome in the countries that once acknowledged her dominion is still far from being destroyed, and prophecy foretells a restoration of her power. I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. Mm. The influence of what? Rome. Mm -hmm. And the countries that once acknowledged her dominion is far from being destroyed. Do we see uh, the influence of Rome in our country? Mm -hmm. Like in what ways? Buildings? Buildings. Natali? Yeah, I mean, our, our, our capital buildings. You know, I think all of them, right? Are they all... In one way or another, in every, every state, have that, that dome, you know, that mm -hmm. almost cathedral-like uh, architecture. Yeah. What yeah. other ways? The currency has currency. Latin mm -hmm. or Roman numerals. Mm -hmm. Latin and Roman numerals. Yeah. yeah right? Both. Yeah, yeah it's both, got yeah. both. Great. Yeah. What else? The Senate. Yes. And the, uh, how about the eagle? Mm -hmm. You know, and the, uh, you know, the, um, what's got arrows in, in one Engraining. What do you call that? An eagle's claw? or Yeah. His claw. Is that what you yeah, call their claw. feet? A bird's foot? Their... A talon? Talons. Talons. Okay, talons. That's an eagle's foot. Yeah. That's his claws, but what do you call an eagle's foot? His foot. <laughs> you ask a silly question. You get a silly answer. You get answer. a silly answer. All right. <laughs> Fair enough. Touche. Touche, Doug. Um, but you've got the... Um, what, the arrows in one? Yeah, arrows in one. Foot. And the, what do you have, the branches in the other? Is that what it is? That That's, is grain. Is it? I don't know. Does anybody have a dollar bill? <laughs> a $20 Who carries bill, those actually. anymore? Yeah, who carries those anymore? <laughs> How about a $100 bill? It's going into the offering plate. It's going into the offering plate. <laughs> the leaves. The, the, it all is, all the, all it is the branch. Okay. Yeah, okay yeah. All right. So, but it's interesting. If you, if you do a study of what those represent, um, e each thing has a representation. I think there's 13, mm -hmm. you know, arrows. And what else, Roberta? Yeah, like the crown. Oh, the, the yeah. coronet with the leaves. Yeah, there'd yeah. be, maybe, is there anybody, is there anybody watching? <laughs> is anybody watching this live stream? Uh, maybe you people. could give us some uh, other things that are, uh, that have that Roman uh, influence that we have just in this country or maybe things that, that you've noticed. Mm -hmm. So we know in currency, uh, things with government. Right. You know, our government was modeled after, yeah. uh, after Rome. I think even highways, you know, are, are modeled after Rome. So there's, sure notice he got a five and didn't want to do it. Yeah, this, yeah, it does with all like the, the uh, columns carriage. and everything. You can see that. Couldn't be more Rome. And what do we, uh, yeah, you've got the eagle with the branch and the arrows. So um, the Latin and then Abraham Lincoln. <clears throat> Good old Abe, who is not Roman. It's not Roman. But uh, thank you, Doug. Make sure he gets that in the offering plate. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's go ahead and read the next quote from Testimonies, Volume 5, page 712. And then if anybody has, do we get any comments? On, uh, um, oh, let, let me go back to we my don't screen wanna, uh, here. Uh, 
Not so much, but Betty's, Betty's watching. Terry and Janelle are watching. Betty's okay. watching. Happy Sabbath. Okay. So, so see Terry's on with the French yep, Revolution. Terry got the French Revolution. Okay, yeah. which is, a, by the way, a very good chapter in Great Controversy. Because, again, uh, just like history is repeating itself, what took place during the French Revolution, which was uh, atheism. You know what the number one religion is in the United States today is atheism. And, Which is funny uh, they say that's an, a religion. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. not. Seems a religion. I, it seems like a contradiction, yeah. but it but it is. <laughs> it is you know, it's, religion. Uh, it's that a is, set of beliefs. That's a set of beliefs. Yeah. That is correct. So, um, you see atheism, the age of enlightenment. Uh, you had Darwinism. Mm -hmm. You know that took place, and that's uh, what's being taught in our schools. Right. Um, even some Adventist schools. Shame on mm -hmm. you for teaching evolution yeah. um, because that is not what the Bible teaches. We mm -hmm. have a God that loves us and that created us. He spoke us into existence um, and he created the earth, the heavens, the earth, the sea, and all that is in them in six days. That is what the Bible says. Okay, no. Testimonies, Volume 5, page 712. Savannah. Oh, me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> when our nations shall so abjure the principles of its government as to enact a Sunday law, Protestantism will in this act join hands with popery. It will be nothing else that giving life to the tyranny which has long been eagerly watching its opportunity to spring again into active despotism. So again, we have it springing again. So like Despotism. manner, we get to look at the conditions of what took place before so that we can understand now. Let me ask you, I mean, just the people here, I can see you. Have you, based on what you've studied in the Bible, has that helped you in dealing with or uh, mentally and physically with what's been happening in the world around you? I mean, has, has what you have learned in the Bible, has that helped you deal with the times that are, ha that are happening now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, some. It's just understanding that, knowing that these things are going to happen, yeah. and there's nothing we can do about it. To yeah. We can't stop what's going to happen, but what can we do about it in the sense of we can't, we can't stop the world from ripping itself apart. That's what Satan wants. Right. But we as individuals can change yeah you know and we can encourage each other yeah and do our part to help and, others that's change, right yeah. and, and do our part and we we've studied this we see this in the bible um where we we did a bible study last night we talked about jacob you know how god never changes mm -hmm. and how we saw jacob's change you know and we mm -hmm. see all these people and, and each one of you have changed since you first met jesus maybe you haven't met jesus before and this is the first time you're hearing about this um when you meet Jesus, he will not leave you where you're at if you don't want to be. Right. You know, he can't force you to do anything, but he wants us to be converted. But Jesus will not leave you where you're at. And then he'll show you what's coming up next so that we, we it, and in Matthew 24, he says, it. he goes, look, don't be troubled. You know, these things are going to happen. This is the beginning of sorrow. So we need to constantly look at the encouragement when we study um, all of this history, because it gets too easy to be doom and gloom, I think. Sorry, I just got a whiff of that rain. Of the it rain, just yeah. smells so <laughs> good. <laughs> we're moving it outside. It is pouring here, yeah. <laughs> it is. We're, we're... Well, and I just want to make a little plug for new believers um, and for people who are even on the cusp of it, saying that, you know, you know he, he won't make you do something and he won't leave you there, but he also will take you as you are. That's right. But again, he does not leave you there. Right, right. So do not think that you have to be perfect right. before you decide. It's a very to, commonly misquoted, yeah. you know, that, oh, yeah. God takes us as, you know, yeah. he, 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 I'm trying to think how they word it. Yeah. Because I know how it's supposed to be worded. Yeah. It's like, they, well, they he'll accept you it. as you are. Yeah. Look, he will meet you. They, they meet you where, where you're you are. at yeah, that and kind of the condition that you're in. But yeah. Jesus never leaves but they, you. But they stop right the, the there. Goal, right? Yeah. They usually stop right there. Right. They don't continue. It's right. their and excuse so, to, I can be who I am. Right. And God still and loves me. And that's not what this But that's says. not right. what that's it not says. What and, says. And look, you can be who you are. Exactly. You can. But yeah. when you meet Jesus that, and you want to walk with Jesus, that constitutes change. The beginning of conversion. The, mm -hmm. the process of sanctification. And... Um, I, I would encourage you to study in the Gospels the people that Jesus met and 
what their reaction was. Mm. I mean, even in the Old Testament, you have Hebrews chapter 10, the faith chapter. They moved. People moved right. when they met Jesus. And if they didn't accept Jesus, look at the man, the rich young ruler. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm going to follow you. He's like, awesome. Come. But can you stay here? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just keep doing what you're doing. Just keep doing it. He yeah. didn't ask him that. Did he? he knew yeah. where he was struggling, and that was with um, covetousness. Mm -hmm. And he said, look, everything that you have, sell. Right. You know, and come and follow me. And the guy walked away, man of sorrow. So just, and Jesus met him. Mm -hmm. That man stayed in his condition. Did he continue with Jesus? Yeah. No. Not that we know of, not in the Bible. You know, we don't hear that. So Jesus will meet you wherever you're at, no matter what your condition yeah. is, he will meet you. But if you walk, when you walk with Jesus, your life is different. Yep. You're never in the, in the same condition. And that's why we call it your walk. Right. You know, when you walk, you move. You know, you ever heard anybody say, hey, my stand with Jesus is doing good. <laughs> right. My sitting with Jesus is, is going well. It's like, man, my, my, my walk with him, my relationship yep. is growing with Jesus. It doesn't yeah. just stay the same. So that's a very good yeah. point. If you're not moving, you should be worried. Yeah, yeah, you should be worried. And if you're going backwards, even more. You're more worried. <laughs> Roberta. Oh, we have a comment. Mm. The calmer that I am. Right. And my praise without ceasing right. that you have to do Right. Right. And you've got that spiritual habit growth. And Roberto was talking about how when things would happen, um, it would frighten her. You know, that we that we mm -hmm. would have fear and then she started recognizing that she would pray when mm -hmm. things would happen. And the more she would pray, then the less fear she would have. And that's why we're supposed, that's why we're, Jesus tells us to pray without ceasing. Because yep. if we're in contact with the Father, we know what's taking place. How could we worry when we know that God is, mm -hmm. is leading us? Do we have any comments? Because I see stuff <laughs> see moving. Stuff popping up. Terry said, give us the mind of Daniel and David. Okay. And walk with him your you're, when you walk with him, you're going where he goes. That's right. Not where That's we right. want to yeah, go. That's a very good point. Our walk with, with Jesus, we go where he goes. Okay, let's go to our next quote. This is a big one. <clears throat> I'll read this one. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Give you a break <laughs> till the next one. All right. And this is from Signs of the Times, June 12, 1893. When the land which the Lord provided as an asylum for his people, which verse would that be, by the way, in Revelation? Uh, chapter 12, when the woman fled mm -hmm. uh, to the wilderness. So in the, when the land which the Lord provided as an asylum for his people that they might worship him according to the dictates of their own consciences, the land over which for long years the shield of omnipotence has, spread, has been spread, the land which God has favored by making it the, the depository of the pure religion of Christ. When that land shall, through its what? Legislators, abjure the principles of Protestantism and give countenance to Romish apostasy in tampering with God's what? Law. With his law. It is then that the final work of the man of sin will be revealed. Mm -hmm. Protestants will throw their whole influence and strength on the side of the papacy. By a national act, enforcing the false sabbath by the way what would that have to go through the church would have to go through state through in order state, to do yeah. that they will give life and vigor to the corrupt faith of rome reviving her tyranny and oppression of conscience then it will be time for god to work in mighty power for the vindication of his truth so here again we have the giving life and the vigor the reviving of church and state you can't enact a, a church cannot enact a law nope and the well in, a, in our constitution um neither can uh, a law be enacted against a church yeah. although we see that that's a bit on shaky ground right now right. so okay let's go to our next page page 225 where it says the final group of martyrs and their vindication and in revelation chapter 13 verses 11 through 18 describes the power that will heal the papacy's deadly wound, the United States of America. This beast will do all in its power to honor 
the first beast. So let's turn in our Bibles to Revelation chapter 13 and read verses 11 through 18. Savannah, you're up. those who dwell in it, to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs, so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their forehead, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name, which that is only for seven. You want to read verse 18? I can read verse 18. Okay. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Six, six. So what's the number? 600. What does it represent? Number of a man. The number of a man. So you're not going to get it tattooed on your neck and it means something. I mean, maybe somebody has it tattooed on their neck, but that's not, what it's, that's not the point. By the way, what day of the week was man created? The sixth day. Look, the number six in, Bi in the Bible represents man. And you'll see that uh, consistently through the Bible. But here you have 666, like making a point. And John tells you, uh, he who has wisdom, let him calculate the number. What does calculate mean? Do math. Do math. <laughs> Something you've been forced to do a lot today. Oh, man. Um, so he's telling you you have to add up. And I think King James says sum up the number. Um, but you have to add up the number, and you get the number 666. What is the issue here in Revelation chapter 13? And uh, let's look at verse 4. Because I want, I want you to see the central theme. Because obviously, we're talking about the mark of the beast in here. We're talking about the United States and Bible prophecy, but we're also talking about um, Papal Rome and Bible, and Bible history. But they both have a major role to play in today and in the future, and working mm. together. But look at verse 4, Revelation 13, 4. It says, so they did what? Worship. They worshiped they the worshiped. dragon who gave authority to the beast, and they did what? Worship. Worshiped the beast. What's the issue over? Worship. Worship. And I want you to notice in verse 8, all who dwell on the earth will do what? Worship, Worship him. him. And if you look in verse, oh, uh, what was it, 16... I think it was uh, six, uh, 15, and it says that uh, there's breath. No, isn't that interesting when you're reading that? So verse 15, he was granted to give breath to the image. What does that mean? Life. For what? Oh, so breath means what? Life. Life. Doesn't mean soul. And he was granted to give soul to the, look, he was granted to give life to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as who would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. So what is the issue? Oh, every week we got a microphone. I think, I think she bumped her button. Hey, last week, <laughs> uh, Natalia this, fell this asleep is why, last week. We caught you, buddy. This is why we uh, need your guys' phone. comments. Yeah, uh, yeah, Miss Betty let us know that Savannah's mic I'm is like, not working. I hear working. Natalia, but I don't hear Paul. I'm like, what is going on here? We all need each other, please. Oh, yeah. But what is the issue over in Revelation 13? What is the mark of the beast over? What is the issue? Worship. It's worship. over worship. Worship. It's not over vaccinations. And I'm not going to get into a political um, aspect of it, but look, it's not over microchips. It's not over 5G. Revelation 13 is talking about worship, true and false worship. You can have your views on those items, on vaccines and chips and whatnot. I, I get it. But that has nothing to do with what's being talked about in Revelation chapter 3, that kind of stuff really distracts our minds. Mm -hmm. And it takes, it takes us from a spiritual understanding to a worldly understanding. 
And that's fear. And that's what Satan wants that's, to do. That's, yeah, that's anything the to take us. That's right. Because yeah. nobody thinks that the issue is worship is going to be. That's nobody right. Thinks that. nobody, yeah. nobody thinks that. Nobody thinks that. Unless you have this, you won't be able to buy or sell. And look, there's a lot of crazy stuff that's happening that no pen could, could tell us about. You know, we understand that. But we have to understand, too, when we look, when we go all the way back to Cain and Abel, what was the issue over? Worship. It was worship. over worship. It was over yeah. worship. You know, you have the people, different lives and things that are, that are taking place, but the issue is over. Do you worship God or are you, wor are you following after Satan? It, look, if you're not worshiping God, I know that's, it's kind of weird to say at times mm -hmm. to people, but it's like you're, you're paying homage and you're worshiping Satan. By, by, by disregarding and, and neglecting God, you've made your decision. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, you're, you're following one or the other. That's why it with, decision, that's yeah. why with the beast, the mark is in the hand or the mind, right. because there'll be people who don't even know, don't even know they're following and worshiping the beast, but just by the actions of being able to live life the way that they can with their comforts, whatever it is, um, they'll be, they'll be showing that through their, their action. That's why you have the mark on the right hand. It is not a, a literal mark. No, no. We have to, this is spiritual. There's not a literal beast coming up out of the literal sea with the literal seven heads and literal seven and ten horns and crap. Right. Like this is all symbolic. We have to be very careful when we're studying the Bible that we're not picking and choosing what's literal mm -hmm. and what's symbolic. This is talking about One worshiping God. Bible study method. What, that's yeah. right. F right. We don't want, we don't want our own interpretation of the exactly. Bible. Let the Bible interpret itself. In fact, put your finger or a bookmark in Revelation 13 and go to Daniel chapter 7. Maybe some of you are hearing this for the first time and are saying, well, what do you mean a beast is the, the U.S. Um, coming up out of the earth? How do you know what a beast represents in Bible prophecy? Daniel chapter 7 23. and verse 20, I think he says the verse 17. Daniel's had a vision. He's seen a lion come up out of the sea, he's seen a bear come up out of the sea, a leopard come up out of the sea, and then a dreadful beast come up out of the sea. What do these represent? Let's let the Bible interpret itself. Uh, Daniel 7, verse 17. Those great beasts, which are four, are four kings which arise out of the earth. So what does a beast represent? A king. A kingdom. A kingdom. Okay, yeah. now notice in, uh, let's read verse 23 and 24 as well. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth, which shall be different from all other kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth, trample it and break it in pieces. The 10 horns are 10 kings who shall arise from this kingdom and another shall rise after them and he shall be different from the first ones and he shall subdue three kings. Go ahead, read verse 25 is two. He shall well. speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change laws, times and law. Then the saints shall be given into his hand for a time and times and half a time. Now, knowing that in Daniel chapter seven, remember, Daniel sees a lion, a bear, a leopard, and a dreadful beast with 10 horns, and a little horn comes up and uproots three horns. So you have this little horn that's speaking pompous things, this little horn that's persecuting God's saints mm -hmm. for a time, times, and dividing a time. Now back to Revelation chapter 13. Look at, notice how John sees this. He says, then I, verse 1, Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast. What's a beast? A kingdom. kingdom. Rising up out of the sea. What does the sea represent? Peoples. People. Represents peoples, nations, multitude, right? Mm -hmm. So this is, because uh, you, you see the contrast with the second beast here. So you have this kingdom coming up among from the people, having seven heads, ten horns, and on its horns ten crowns, and on his head a blasphemous name. Pompous words, mm -hmm. speaking blasphemies, just like we saw in Daniel chapter 7. So these two chapters are very connected. They're intertwined. Mm -hmm. you, you need to study the book of Daniel and Revelation together, but you have 7, Daniel chapter 7, and Revelation chapter 13. Notice what John sees in verse 2. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, and his feet were like the feet of a bear, bear and the mouth the mouth of a lion. lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. And then I saw one of his heads as it had been mortally wounded. Check this out. So Daniel, when he's writing about what's taking place in chapter 7, he's in Earth's history of Babylon. 
So he says, I'm in Babylon, and then comes Medo-Persia, and then Greece, and then Rome. Lion, bear, leopard, dreadful beast. But he's smiling at me. <laughs> Nothing. All right. I didn't know if you had a comment. She knows that, what's so. coming. I just right, know she where knows you're going. Coming. Okay, cool. So John, so David's looking in the future. Mm -hmm. John is standing. What time period did John live in when he was writing the Revelation? Dreadful, the Roman. The, the dreadful beast. beast. The, the Roman power. The yeah. legs of iron, yeah. right? So John says, hey, now he's going to go in reverse order because he's looking back in time. That's why he doesn't say um, uh, the he's same order. Of, for, yeah and uh, the four beasts because he's living during the time of the fourth beast. So he looks back and says, I see a leopard and I see a, a, bear. a bear and I see and a, a lion. lion. This, this shows you how God is giving us a chronological timeline of earth's history mm -hmm. over and over and over. And now we're seeing it as we study the seals. We're seeing that so that we would understand what's going to take place. So Daniel tells you what's going on in Babylon. Mm -hmm which is spiritual Babylon in, mm -hmm. in Revelation that he, that he talks about. And John, who's living in that time of Rome, Peter, who calls Rome Babylon, uh, that's in uh, 2 Peter, I believe, in the last verse, um, there, you see all these similarities in the verbiage you know, that they're using, mm -hmm. the, their terminology that they're using. And you want to study those books closely together. And, and go ahead. I, I was just going to point out again, you know, why why we keep stressing that you need to let the Bible interpret itself. Right. You know, a lot of people they'll read those and then they'll start, oh well, the bear that must be Russia, or right. you know, you start coming up with these, and it's like, no, keep reading. As as we read in Daniel, you see these beasts, and then it explains the what chapter. those beasts are. Mm -hmm. Right. There should be no question. Right. That's you know? right. That's so right. let the Bible interpret itself. Let the Bible interpret itself because there are a million different interpretations, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. of what the beat and it's hard to hear and uh, we have a radio station locally and it was uh, i was coming off of one of our projects late at night and i had turned i was trying to get my bluetooth on and it just goes to radio if i right. don't and it was a sermon and he was talking about covid and then he went into the beast of daniel 7 i'm like ooh, ooh hey I'm let's like, see where this, this goes is good <laughs> and it was not good it you was know not and he good. did the russia and then all, stuff that made no sense Right. You know, and as a person who's wanting to study the Bible and understand the books of Daniel and Revelation and all the books, the Bible as a whole, um, it's so important that you learn to study the Bible for yourself mm -hmm. because there are so many different interpretations and beliefs of it that it's uh, it's frustrating. And when you when you really look at it and you just you just read this. Not even anything else. I mean, I know I like to have a lot of extra reference books. I'm um, <laughs> yeah, Ben and I are right there. But um, what's really important is that you understand what this says first. Right. Have a solid foundation of what this is, and then you can start adding other right. stuff. That's right. And is once you read it and learn it, you realize that it's so simple. Yeah. Like it is not a closed book. Yeah. People see, like where it says in Daniel, shut up the words of this book. Right. So it won't be until the time of the end. Right. Well, we are in the time of the end. Right. So this book is opened, but people stop right there. Oh, I can't even understand it right. because the book is closed. Right. Well, that's not true. Right. And this here, when they, I think it's one of Satan's biggest ploy because this right here lays out the entire conflict, you know? And so he wants to distract us from what this says, because this tells us what happened, what is happening now, mm -hmm. and then what is coming. That's right. Yeah, his plan, right. exactly yes, his battle plan. plan. That's yeah. right. This is for us for today. Yep. The, I mean, for, for our church, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, we are to be teaching what the words that Daniel had shut up, that is now open, mm -hmm. and the book of Revelation, which its very name means to reveal, the revealing, because yeah. it's for our time. That's why Daniel was told to seal it. He's like, it's not for you to worry about right now. Right. That's going to be down the road. Mm -hmm. We are in that time. So anything that Satan can do to distract us from understanding these books. And, and yes, it's simple now. When we apply the Bible study method, the historical method, when we look at it, it makes sense, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But when you just open it up or if you listen to one person's version of it or another, it's so convoluted. Yeah. Why would you want to spend time? Which is with why you, you know? need to read the Bible in its entirety. Right. 
because like we have been discussing the whole entire time we've been doing any of these studies, the Bible explains itself. Right. right. Like you don't need any external interpretation for anything. That includes the Old Testament. That includes the like Old Testament. Rid of so when people disregard the Old yeah. Testament, it kind of frustrates me. Yeah, the Bible is the Old <laughs> and the New Testament. Yeah. And uh, we've gone over that quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, because without the Old Testament, you wouldn't have a New Testament. Exactly. Um, it would be partial. So very uh, important to understand. So when we read in Revelation 13, we know what a beast represents, comes up out of the sea. Then you have this other beast that comes up out of the earth. So if the sea represents the people, nations, multitudes, and tongue, what, and tongues, what does the earth mean? An area where, that's, where there sparsely, isn't a nation. Sparsely right? populated. There wasn't a nation, and you get into the whole history you know, of the woman fleeing. What does a woman represent in Bible prophecy? The church. The church. The church, the church fled. Why did the church flee? Because she was being persecuted. She was being persecuted. persecuted yeah. She was being trampled upon by who? The little horn. Papal Rome. You see, it's all, it all ties together, mm -hmm. and it's saying the same thing. You're just getting all these other biblical perspectives of it. It's not saying all these different things to try to confuse you. Some people say, why is it so confusing? It's confusing when we let other people try to explain mm -hmm. to us what the Bible means. And I'm not saying that we should. We need each other to be able to study mm -hmm. with each other because iron sharpens iron. Exactly. You know, so we, we and we're good for edification for each other yeah. that we can study things out. But and it's going to take a little effort. Yeah, you it's can't a just, study to show yourself. Yeah, you can't just read it once and expect it to. Yeah, there's yeah. it's going to take a little effort. It. There's a difference between reading and studying. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, and in the Bible it says to study to show yourself approved. Yeah. Study. It's something that and look, this is the lesser light in that it leads, it, it points to Jesus, right. right? Shows us God's will, right? Right. God is infinite. Do you think you'll ever have all of it? No. This, this is the book that keeps on giving because of the source and who it points to. Is Our God is an eternal, infinite God. You do not know everything about the Bible. And I don't want to, to discourage the person who says, I know everything about it. You don't. And uh, to be honest, the more we study, the more we see how little right. you know we know. But um, how amazing is it that I mean, we're seeing the, just the history repeating, going all the way back to Genesis to understand what's taking place in Revelation 13. Have you ever thought of that before? The issue over worship mm -hmm. and that Abel was killed. He was persecuted by his brother, who was also a Christian, so to speak, mm -hmm. right? And then go all the way to Revelation 13 and here. By the way, there was a mark put on Cain. Yes, there was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a mic drop. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Like, lapel drop. We're done. I'll drop my Think lapel. About that. Look, there was a mark put on Cain who killed his brother for his worship to God. There is a mark that is put on the people who worship the beast, who turn their backs on God. Yep. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. But where is God's seal put? Not in our right hands. On the forehead. Can't work your way to heaven. You decide. You choose. You choose your relationship with God. You choose your relationship with Jesus. Um, you choose your to walk with the Lord. Yeah. Okay. Your actions will follow then. Yes. That by your fruits, yeah. people will know you. So as our faith in Jesus is represented by what we do. Yep. That's a very good point. Okay. Revelation chapter seventeen, verses. 1 and 2, and verses 6. You want to read that, Paul? Sure. What right. was that again? 17, 1 and 2, and, and 6. six. All right. <clears throat> then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication. And the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Verse 6, I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. Okay, and let's continue on with Revelation 18. And Savannah, I'll have you read verse 23. Let's see if we can get through uh, these verses on page 226. The light of a lamp shall not shine in you any more, and the voice of bridegroom and bride shall not be heard in you any more. For your merchants were great men of the earth, for by your sorcery all nations were deceived. And in Revelation 19, 1 and 2, the, these verses describe the time when God answers 
the prayers of the souls under the altar that we read in verse 9, Revelation 6, 9, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, at this time, the martyrs of the past and the martyrs of the future will receive their reward. So Revelation 19, verse 1 and 2, Paul. After these things, I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power belong to the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, because he has judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth with her fornication, and he has avenged on her the blood of his servants shed by her. Now in Revelation 20, verse 4, the martyrs whom the papacy slew will now have the right to judge those who judged and condemned them. During the thousand years, or also known as the millennium, those whom the papacy <coughs> had beheaded will pronounce judgment upon those who had oppressed them. So this is Revelation 20 and verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. So here you have the reward of the, first, the martyrs of the first stage mm -hmm. and then the martyrs um, uh, in the second stage. And when does that second, that second stage of martyrdom begin? During the thousand years? Oh, no. no, sorry. Before, before. Before, before, the thousand before the thousand years. years, yeah. When church and state join hands together, right? right? Because then the church will be able to use the state, will be able to use the sword again mm -hmm. that was taken away um, in 1798. And that, those will be signs that we will notice mm. um, to take place. I, I pray that for the people who know this to any extent would take heed to the warning now and not wait for that to happen to say, okay, now, now I'll believe. Does that yeah. make sense? Mm -hmm. we, like when God reveals to us truth, it's our opportunity to reject that or accept it. Yep. You know, it, we don't want to put truth on the back burner and then say, well, I'll, I'll decide to follow truth when I really see things like there, if that's really going to happen. Because it really shows a lack of faith right. when we don't heed uh, the warning and the call um, that Jesus gives us in his word. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, People uh, are waiting for that sign. I'm like, yeah, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> What's, what other sign do <laughs> you need? What sign do you yeah. need? Yeah, yeah that, that's very true. You mm -hmm. know, and it, yeah, if, if you understood this, you'd understand that this whole thing is a sign. Yeah, I mean, what, what else can we expect? So yeah. we're talking about signs. What else can we expect? We know church and state in the future, but what else do you think we can ex expect after having a pandemic that seems to be cycling up again, going through certain areas and, and the riots? What other signs can we expect? I'm thinking another see? earthquake is coming. Another earthquake is coming. <laughs> yeah, you got that the Sunday laws. The Sunday laws. Some Sunday laws will be Who will call come. for the Sunday law? The people. The people, the people will. The people, yeah. Look how the look look how the government responds to the people when the people are in a frenzy. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we we're able to actually see this. We don't we don't just have to read about something in history. You know what took place during the French Revolution or you know during the Dark Ages, the Protestant Reformation to see how, an, how a government can be influenced by the people. Right. Was Pilate influenced mm -hmm. by the people? Oh, oh yeah. Yep. And Pilate had said, when he's talking about Jesus, he said, I don't see anything wrong. Like, we're good. Right. Yeah. You know, like, I don't feel threatened by Jesus, you know, and his kingdom that he's talking about. Um, but as soon as the people started to revolt against Pilate, then he started to worry about his political position yeah he's, yeah he's like now i have a problem he's like okay well, well so you know he even tries to to he was tried to use a little bit of tact he's like all right so i can give you jesus who there's nothing he's done nothing he's innocent right. or i could release this murderer this leader of a cult in, in barabbas and what do the people say <laughs> give, give me barabbas. barabbas do you think Pilate may have been a little surprised at that like, i think what? he was like, they want Barabbas, but did he give them what they wanted? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even though he saw no fault with Jesus. 
Again, we have seen this in the Bible. The things yeah. that are taking place today, we have seen this in the Bible. We're actually seeing it with our own eyes now. We don't have any reason or excuse to be caught surprised. Jesus says, uh, I'll come like a thief in the night. He tells us to be ready. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't, we don't know the hour is coming. In other words, we need to be prepared today. If we're waiting for signs to happen for us to believe, that's a problem. If we're looking for signs because we know that these are the times that, uh, that the earth's closing chapters in history, that we know time is short, mm -hmm. we need to be spreading the gospel now more than ever. This is, no. this is it. Yeah. You know, uh, we were not, we're not going to have YouTube live stream, um, for the, I don't know, distant future, mm -hmm. you know, where this is uh, a privilege that, uh, and a, a miracle that God has given us to be able to study with each other while our governments have tried to keep us separated and healthy. Um, but we know that this isn't going to be available the whole time. Mm -hmm. How important is it that we know the Bible? Um, for ourselves. So continue to meet together and to do studies um, so that we are never caught by surprise for the things that are coming right. uh, in the future. Do we have any other comments from people online? See, there's a few. Um, I mean, I can't read it. Savannah's mic was not working. Oh, uh. <laughs> that's, a, that's a weekly comment, by the way. I can't hear. Right. Uh, uh, Karina says the seal of belonging to God is better than being marked as slaves, in this case, slaves of sin. Yeah, yeah, we want that. We want that seal. We yeah. want, I mean, who, why would you want to miss out? Yeah. Why would you want to miss out on what God has planned for us, right? right. What Jesus has um, prepared for us. No. Um, there's, there's, I can't think of a reason to miss out. Any comments from the peeps sitting in the pews? The peanut gallery that's out here. The peanut gallery. <laughs> so you either got everything we discussed or, or understood nothing. none of it. <laughs> this video is recorded, so you get to watch it again. Yep. If it went over your head. We'll okay. pray for you. Yeah, we'll pray. <laughs> Savannah's offered to close with prayer. So let's go ahead and we'll close this study uh, with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for another beautiful day today. Thank you for the bit of sunshine that we got and then the rain that we had. Mm -hmm. Um Please be with us as all of us travel home and keep us safe throughout the rest of this week. Please bless everyone who listened live and who's going to listen in the future. Help them to have your understanding and that this is not at all scary, but a message of right. hope and that Amen. we can come to you and have that hope and that assurance that you are going to be with us through everything right. and that we cannot wait for your soon return. And please bless us until we can all come back together again. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Real quick, because we don't have class next week, unless you're, if you guys decide to do it. No, I think we'll wait. I, I, think, <laughs> we'll, I think we'll wait because we don't want to we'll miss. the Holy Spirit moves. Right. All right. Yeah. Um, but we will, uh, what I would like people to do for homework, so if you can write this down, will you look in Revelation chapter 13? and find the violation of God's law. The first four commandments, mark the verses that violate. Remember what the little horn does in Daniel chapter 7, thinks to change times, times and, and laws. laws. So in Revelation 13, you have what that beast power is doing. Find the verses that are the direct violation of God's law, mainly the uh, first four commandments. Okay. That's okay. it. Nope, sounds good. Uh, so, yeah, I was just going to say the same thing. I, I know we said this last week, but yeah. next week. We mean it this time. We, yeah, we, we mean, mean it, it this time. We will not be having the Revelation 7 we seal. We checked the calendar. We, yeah, we checked the calendar this time. We're for sure. So next week, no study uh, at 3 o'clock. Um, but please join us for our 11 o'clock mm -hmm. service as well as our 1 o'clock. And I almost forgot, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, our new children's story that yep, we've we started with Alicia. Alicia. Uh, we also got some plans for maybe some children's activities during the week in That's the work, the so we'll let yeah. you know. Wow. Um, but please check those things out. Please join us next week. Um, as always, please like, comment, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, we will see you all next week. Thanks for watching. God bless. Happy Sabbath.